Hi folks, in this video, a modular 8-pin, sometimes known as an RJ45, but more properly referred to as an 8P8C, crimp-on connector onto the end of a Cat5 uh, twisted 8-pair uh, cable, I mean 4-pair cable. Alright, so if you do happen to have a boot that goes with it, some do, some don't, it's not mandatory, put that on first. Okay, got my boot on. Then I'll take my scissors and make a cut so I can open up the wire. Some open more easily than others. And then I make a small little nick so I can use this. See this stuff? This is called ripcord or sometimes it's called dental floss. It's just a little thin string. Not every cable has this in it, but, but most do. So take that little rip string or rip cord and pull it where the nick is. So what you can do, what you're doing is essentially using the string to tear a line down the side of the jacket. And the reason you're doing that is so that you can cut the jacket off without nicking the wires. So when I made that first cut, remember, there's a there's a there's a high probability that I may have nicked the wires inside. You don't you don't want to to you know have that before you crimp. So you rip the cord back, and then this is known as fluting, which basically means to cut off the edges of the wire in such a way that when you're done, that's not my best work, but what you should end up is basically with kind of a nice round even uh, end to the jacket all the way around. And the more, the better it is, which the more you can get it that way the better because um, it work, when we go to crimp you'll see why it matters. Anyway, this cable is a little more tricky to work with than others. I find plenum cable especially is a little easier to work with because it has kind of a more rigid Constitution. Anyway, when you're done with that, get rid of the get rid of the rip string. Don't need the rip cord anymore. Okay. Then what you want to do, and this is this is the tricky part that that messes up a lot of people, is is knowing how to roll out the wires in the proper order. So you got your four four pairs in here: a blue pair, orange pair, green pair, and brown pair. So you've got eight wires total. So what I do is I kind of try to get them in the general area where I'm going to want them before I start. So I do a what's known as a 568B termination. There's 568A and 568B. All the difference is is where you put the orange and the green pairs. And the, and the B termination, the orange pair goes on the far side when you're looking at it down from the top. On, a, um, on an A termination, the green is replaced with the orange. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. All right, then what I want to do is cut off some of the slack. Because you're only going to need about half an inch right here. So, oh, cut off to where maybe you've got like about an inch left. Okay? So it's about an inch of wire there. Then what you want to do is you want to unroll these guys. Now I find that uh, sticking my fingernail there in the edge of the edge of the, the, the twist kind of helps me get some leverage on it to untwist it. You want to untwist them back to where the, the collar of the wire is. But not any further. You don't want to go back any further. Just untwist as much as you need, then the green. So the way the order works is that is it's or as you're looking down at the crimp from the top, the white and the the white orange and the orange are going to be to your far left, and then the green gets split. So the green, what you do is the white green side, or what's known as the tip of the green, the the the, the wire that's more white than green. And the solid green, or, or, the, or the green white, which is more green than white, is going to go on either side of the blue pair. So now I'm untwisting the blue pair. So when I'm done, what I'm going to do is have the blue pair in between those two. And the blue is actually the one pair that's in a little bit of a different configuration. As you're doing this, you'll notice that all the whites usually end up towards the uh, left side as you're looking down and all the solids end up on the right side. The blue is the exception. If that's not making sense, just hold on, it'll make sense here in a minute. As I'm doing this, what I'm doing, you'll see me as I'm tugging on the wires because what I'm doing is I'm kind of wiggling, wiggling them to kind of straighten them out, you know, because they're, it's kind of like hair that's been in curlers, you know, all day. It's, 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 it's got a wiggle in the wire and I'm trying, or a wave in the wire and I'm trying to, to flatten that out. And then lastly, I'm just going to do this brown pair here, and then we'll be ready to get started. Okay. So, the order goes like so. Starting from the left-hand side, 
as you look down on top of the wire. Now I know the way I'm holding this is actually opposite from what I'm saying from the way you're watching the video. But if you're holding this in your hand, on the far left you've got the white orange and then the orange. Then you've got the white green and then you've got the blue, the solid blue. Then you've got the white blue. Then the other side of that green, which was the solid green, and you got the white brown and then the brown. All right. So if you, this is a 568B termination. If this was an A termination, the only difference would be is that the green and the orange would just change places. You take the white orange and put it where the white green is. You take the solid orange, put it where the solid green is, and of course then take the appropriate greens and put them back over here on the far right. That's the only difference. At the end of the day, when you're making a patch cord and you're doing both ends, what matters is that it's a wire for wire connection on both sides. Where it's, even if I were to do this in a wholly different pattern, as long as that same pattern matched on the other side, um, we'd be okay. But uh, anyway, so here we go. So what I do now is I've got them kind of flattened out like that. Is I, is I take my finger there and my thumb here, I kind of just pinch it almost about a little less than the length of my thumbnail and I cut off everything right above my thumb in a flat straight across like I was doing a haircut. See how that's flat like that? All the while keeping this pinched because I don't want any of these wires to fall out of order. Okay, and this can be a little tricky when you're first doing this and you may have to do this more than once before you get it down. Now the other tricky part is, so just so you can see about how much I've got left, it's roughly about, oh, three quarters of an inch from the jacket. Then I take the connector, holding it with the pins facing up, and I'm going to take these flattened wires and, and I press them against the bottom of the, see this little square opening there? I'm going to press them against the bottom and slowly slide them in, watching that each one of those wires should stay in the place where I left it, which they all stay in order the way I left them, and that they all go down into an appropriate wire slot. There's actually eight little slots there at the end. And so what you want is for them to all go in the appropriate slots. Occasionally you'll get some that give you trouble where two wires will try to go into one slot. Um, or what happens, especially when you're a beginner, is the wires fall out of order. So it, you might have to waste a few of these to, to get it down. Then what I like to do is once I've got them in there as far as they'll go, is I like to take the jacket and just kind of push up on the jacket. Because in a perfect world, what you want is for the jacket to end up right in front of where the crimp is. So the crimp is this little like eighth inch section here in the back. That's going to be the crimp. That's the part that actually bites down into the into the jacket to hold the, the end on there. All right. At the same time that, that crimp bites in there, all these little golden pins up here are also going to be biting down into the respective copper wires. Now, you can't really see it on the camera. But if you ever want to check to make sure you're, you're all the way in, is you can flip it over and it's a little easier to see on the back that the wires have gotten all the way to the end. What you don't want is a situation where maybe some but not all of the wires uh, have not reached all the way to the end because when those the golden pins get punched down, they need to make contact with those wires. All right, so push my jacket in a little bit more. Now I'm ready to crimp. Take my crimping tool, slide it into there, give it a nice cinch. Okay, this is a Klein tool. I used to have an amp tool, which I liked a little better. This is a Klein tool. It's got it's got eight pair, six pair, and four pair of crimping uh, dies on it. Uh, you'll see these come in different variations. I like to do mine twice. I like to give them a good squeeze to make sure I'm really on there all the way. And that's that. Okay. Now listen, if you're just first starting out, don't feel bad if you mess up the first few. I I messed up several before I finally got these right. So. Just have a little patience and, and you'll get it down. You've got your boot, slide your boot back up on there, ready to go. Thanks for watching.